Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I am interviewing Kate McGuire. And not only is this interview, I think, going to provide you some really interesting, um, just funny things, but she also has a podcast that she will talk a little bit about that will absolutely make you die laughing. <laughs> so enjoy today's episode, and I will see you in there. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Kate, thank you for doing this. You are so welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I would love if you would start out by talking about your background in radio. And just <laughs> how did you end up in radio? <laughs> you were there for a long time. So what did that look like for you? And then we'll dive into other things on motherhood. Okay, no problem. So uh, yeah, I have a degree in broadcast journalism from Colorado State. And I literally fell into radio. Um there was a flood on our campus in college. I was working at the television station, and they combined the radio and TV buildings or the rooms together, the studios. And so um, I knew I didn't want TV, but I really, I always wanted to write. Like, that was my dream was to write. And my advisor was like, you cannot graduate from college and just have the great American novel. So we got to find you something to do in the meantime. And TV just wasn't clicking for me. I did not want to be on TV. And then literally our campus flooded. They put the studios in the same room and someone said, hey, my co-host is sick today. Will you sit in with me? And I sat in and filled in and I was like, light bulb moment. Like, this is it. I can tell my stories. I don't have to write them. I can tell them. And I absolutely loved it and pursued it against every college advisor's, you know, advice of there's no money to be made in radio, uh, especially for women, like go television. And I just followed my heart and pursued it and and then spent five years in Colorado doing radio, morning radio, and then moved up to Boise. And I've been here for 21 years. So love it. Yeah. And I spent another 15 in radio here doing oh, hosting a morning show before I... I like to say I lost my mind and blew up my career. <laughs> so talk to me about the morning radio show, because I'm pretty sure that that didn't just happen overnight. What was that? Pro Did you come here for a position and then move into the morning radio show? No. Nope. So I only wanted morning. So okay. when I was in college, I knew that the money-making positions were mornings and afternoon, and I wanted mornings. And so I actually moved to a really small town in Colorado um, mm. and did mornings there, a no-name coal mining town at the time. It's probably going to get a really big name. but <laughs> And I— put in my dues. Like I did mornings there. I did afternoons. I waited tables at night until 11. I got three hours of sleep, but I knew I wanted only mornings on my resume mm -hmm. and I didn't want them to see like, oh, she did weekends. We can throw her in the weekend slot. Oh, she can do this. So I was like, nope, I will just chase mornings. And then I came to Boise thinking I would only be here for two years and build up my resume more. And then I was going to move on to New York or LA and I was going to be the next female Howard Stern. And I fell in love with Boise, Idaho and was like, what they say is marry your market. So I decided mm -hmm. to marry my market and stayed here. But um, yeah, so I was um, very focused on mornings and I would not let them say, you know, if they were like, oh, can you fill in on the weekend? I'm like, nope. I don't even want them to hear me do a weekend mm -hmm. shift in case I do it really well. And then they want me to do right. that permanently. So I was like, nope, sorry, I'm busy. Like I was all mornings. And then, um, yeah. And I, you know, since I know the focus of your podcast, I will say I came into a show that had been established and my male co-host made a lot more money than I did. They considered me the news girl. They just considered me a sidekick. And I tuned that out for the time because I knew I was going to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. And I hope that doesn't sound egotistical, but it was just no. like, all right, this is where I need to be to get to my next step. And at the time, I thought I was on my way to New York, but I was like, okay, I'll play this game, but I'm going to win it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
and clearly you did. So. <laughs> I, I loved it. I love radio. It's so crazy to think that I left it still. I think I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I left that. I love it to this day. So what was uh, – you bring up a really interesting point. So let's talk about the mindset around that because I think that there's a lot of – there are a lot of women that are still in positions that are very heavily male dominated. Uh -huh. And um, I watch the way that some handle that situation and I watch the way that others handle the situation. And I love what you said in that I was just going to prove them wrong. It's almost like stop screaming and just start doing kind of I, is what I like to say to people because your skills – will rise to the top if you just do, right? Yep. Talk about that because I think that that's such a powerful message, especially for the younger women that are listening that are coming up in their careers right now. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of male-dominated industries out there mm -hmm. still. And um, there, you know, I, I talk about this a lot when I'm asked to speak about it is like, oh, but there's a glass ceiling. And I'm like, yeah, there's a hatch door. Like there's some way through it. There's if someone puts a wall up, figure out a different way around it. Mm -hmm. Like I just um, and, you know, my very first co-host told me I would go really far in radio if I just cross my legs and giggle at all of his jokes. And I laughed my way out of that. I put in my two years. I was like, okay. And I just, you know, moved on and got that on my resume because that was the whole point I was there. I wasn't going to scream and try and change this complete, mm -hmm. you know, redneck way of thinking. And I was like, I'm using you to get to my next spot. And so then I came here and it was still, it still is a total good old boys club. And, but one of the things that I remember really focusing on was I'm going to make the brand of Kate McGuire bigger than anything, bigger than the place I work at, bigger mm -hmm. than my co-host. And if that sounds selfish, um, I, I have the numbers to prove that as a team, we were amazing together, but I also knew that they respected him on a different level than I did and, or than they did me. And so I had to make my own entity, my own island and just take care of it. And so that if I did get separated from the team, I could still live and support myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really focused on. And it didn't mean I wasn't a team player, but it was really like, I've got to make sure that I've got a solid brand. And so I found, like you said, every little workaround. And and also I got some great advice from a mentor that said, learn every piece of equipment and software. You know, and radio is a real technical industry. Mm -hmm. So whatever, take that and apply it to whatever you do. But I learned every software program. I learned how to run a board. Most women in radio don't know how to run a board. And I, like, knew how to set up the speakers and set up all this. Like, I knew it all because I didn't want to be dependent on anyone else. And that's not a slam on them. It was just like, right. take care of yourself, girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so powerful. One of my um, <clears throat> one of my guests, her name is Monique, uh, was in a very different field than you in legal and same thing, she basically was told that she would never, you know, be this. And she's like, I just put my head down and proved everyone wrong. And and I love I love that. And I think especially because we do see so many <laughs> people screaming at each other nowadays. I don't know. <laughs> this is not, you know, a political thing. But I feel like sometimes just just digging in and doing what you know you can do and being you and performing is just such a powerful thing to see. And what an example to those that are watching. And you can't dispute results. Yes. And, you know, silence sometimes to me is louder than anything you can Absolutely. say to someone to get their attention. And so, yeah, it's, I remember um, I, I'd gotten to a point in my radio career where it, it didn't bother me for a long time that my co-host made more than me because I did not have the experience that he did. But then I, you know, I spent 15 years on that show. And at some point, I was like, we should be making the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. And it really did start to bother me. So I went to my management and I'd written out everything I did on a daily basis. And I slid it across the table and I just said, hey, I'm really curious, what is he doing that I'm not, that I can start doing in order to get equal pay? And they didn't even look at the document that I had worked on. They slid it back across the table to me and they said, you should thank him for making you the star that you are. 
And that was the seed that was planted that was like, I need to leave. Leave. Yeah. It Mm -hmm. took me four years, but it was just when you, you know, I, and I thought I would just go somewhere else in radio. I was still like, oh, this is going to be, you know, my next step. But when you, when someone blatantly tells you to your face after doing the work and after providing the results, I mean, number one show, number one station, all of those things. But when someone just says, you mean nothing to us, Mm -hmm. like, listen, yeah. Listen and leave. Mm-hmm. So, and sometimes that, and you know, I was sharing with you before we started recording. That was, it. I still think of it as one of the most insane things I ever did because I didn't have the next step. But I just knew I was like, okay, yeah, I've done, done my work here. Mm-hmm. Now I need to take my work elsewhere. Yeah. So let's talk about that because that next phase for you is a very personal phase. Yeah. So you actually decided to do something that was very much not in the public eye and and chose to prioritize, excuse me, your personal life, really. I yeah. did. I left my career yeah. looking for love. Yeah. And it took me a long time to be able to say that, especially being a, an extremely successful college-educated woman and to say that people are like, what? You, like... And I remember people saying to me, the right man will be okay with your success. You know, I was Mm -hmm. making six figures in radio when I left, way beyond anything I ever— I didn't get into radio to make the money. I got into it because I loved it. But I was making—I was the highest-paid female DJ in town. And so—and I was like, nope, I got to go. But I was looking for love. I was 39. I was single. I wanted a family. And I didn't think that being in the public eye anymore would allow me that. The public eye is a living, breathing thing on its own, I think, as a lot of people have learned with social media. And social media changed radio for me. But so, yeah, I left and was like, I'm just going to jump. And I'm a girl looking for love. And in the meantime, I found a job as a public information officer. And I call it the place where I I was able to catch my breath. Mm -hmm. Because being in the public eye for 20 years, and I lived my life on the radio, and I shared so much that I got really quiet. And I just caught my breath. And I had really good benefits. (laughs) Because I worked for the county. (laughs) So I want you to promote your podcast because your podcast is really about that journey. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So Secrets with Kate McGuire was always so I was 40 when I met my husband. Mm -hmm. I had a baby at 41, first time bride at 44. And um, I remember when I was struggling through dating, thinking, you know, I I'm the type that looks at all self-help books, whether it's business or parenting or all the things. And I remember the dating ones were the worst. And I thought, if I ever find my way to the other side of this, I'm going to write a book because they don't talk about the real struggles or how Mm -hmm. much you beat yourself up or the stupid guys that we go back to over and over again, thinking we're going to get a different result. Like, and that was another thing that bugged me. I'm like, I'm a smart woman. Why Christ. am I letting him treat me this way? I love so, that about your podcast. <laughs> Some of the just humor in it for me, I was like, oh, my gosh, you're so real. <laughs> yeah. It's true. The, all of those things happened to me. But so then I was planning on writing a book. And uh, because the books I had read were like, if you bend yourself into a pretzel and you can do yoga and never complain, he will put a ring on it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is horrible advice. And so um, I met my husband. I, I missed radio. I still to this day miss radio. But um, so my husband surprised me with a podcast studio in our garage one year for Christmas and gave me the nudge that I needed to get it going. And so it took me a year to... Because I do all of it on my own, the recording and the uploading and all that. And so, um, and then I launched it and it is dedicated to, you know, it's over 30, flirty and still single. And it's to give hope to women that are over 35 and you're still dating and you feel like you're the only one left on planet single. And I just want people to laugh Mm -hmm. and feel like they're not alone. And through that, through my first two episodes, I've realized I've really made a connection as well with women who are divorced and are back out on the dating scene Mm -hmm. and are like, what is this online dating stuff? Like, this is not (laughs) fun. This is not romantic. (laughs) And so, um, yeah, I really, it's just to inspire people. It gives me my radio fix. And then it's, I love sharing my stories. It's definitely worth listening to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about motherhood. Oh, that's a huge. Yeah. So um, one of the questions that I always ask my guests is what is your biggest mom 
suggestion to others? Like, what is, what would you, in your now almost four years of having a little guy, Yeah. what's your biggest mom recommendation to those that are, any words of wisdom that you have? Gosh, I would, you know, I feel so blessed. I now get why God made me wait so long. And it's the patience that comes with, like, there's so <laughs> many little things that don't need to be freaked out upon. Yes, yeah, safety. I do not want him running into the street. We're riding our bike now, like all those things. But I am beyond grateful for some of the stuff that I just laugh off and I giggle mm -hmm. with him about it and I don't make a big deal about it. Yeah. And I think 22-year-old Kate would have done it a lot different. And that is not in any way shaming the 22-year-old mom that's listening right now. There's just something, there's there's a perk to being a 22-year-old mom because you're going to be done by the time I got started. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a lot of those friends whose kids were graduating as I was giving birth. But one of the perks I would say is that, that patience that comes with it. That was just something that I, my husband and I are like, we're just not going to freak out about all the things that we normally would have. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and so how is motherhood and career? Career Kate and uh, mom Kate? How does... <laughs> I, I think it's such an interesting question for successful women, right? Because everyone... I think the biggest thing that I've wanted to come across in this podcast and asking this question is that everyone navigates it differently yep. and that's okay. Yeah. Right. Because I feel like a lot of us are told you need to do this, this and this. And we put a lot of shame on ourselves as mothers. The mom guilt is a real yes. thing. Mm -hmm. The mom shame. Like it is crazy. It just comes out when they come out. Like there it is. Um, but I so I I started my real estate business when he was five months old. And <laughs> that was it was hard. It's still hard. I have a new business in the sense of it's four years old. My son is four years old. I make a lot of mistakes. Time management, I am really struggling with. It's extremely because I am a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And because I was single for 40 years and I just, if I had to do something, I just did it. And if I needed to stay up all night to get it done and I, well, Guess what? I, you know, like mornings, I wish I could say I got up and I did my readings for the day and worked on my affirmations and did my gratitude list. But if he's up at 530, my whole day is shot. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest struggle for well, not my whole day, but, you know, my morning plans okay. is I think that's my biggest struggle is that I'm a planner and I'm like, this is what I'm going to accomplish today. And for 40 years, I did that. And now I have this living, breathing thing that is a tornado in my world. <laughs> and I wouldn't change it for anything. But it's me learning that it's okay that not everything is going to get done on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. And it is a very hard lesson for me to learn. Like, I... Instead of like, st I'll just be like, well, I guess I got to pull an all-nighter. And my husband's like, you own your own real estate business. Like, who are you answering? Like, go to bed. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't get it. Like I said, I would do. A and then I, I said I would make treats for class today. And I'm trying to be the room mother. Like that, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to be the room mother so bad. And I have zero time in my day. <laughs> it's hard. It is. It's hard. Yeah. And I'm not complaining. Yeah. I just... No, I had no is, it's hard. idea. Yeah. It, like, I wouldn't change it for the world, but yeah. it's just, it really is, I think, the biggest challenge for me is like, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this, and then the school call, you know, he goes to preschool, and they're like, yeah, he's throwing up. He can't be here. And then I'm like, and but no. And your day is. <laughs> I'm like, I got this to do. <laughs> and I'm like, it's just, it's that stuff where planner Kate is not, <laughs> doesn't do well with a tornado in the middle of my world. Yeah. So, yeah, I do a lot of shaming if I don't get something done. So Yeah, you need to let go of that. I do. As <laughs> Brene Brown would say, I need to let go of my shame blanket. Yeah. <laughs> so. so you mentioned six figures. So yep. one of the questions that I like to ask is, do you remember when you achieved that? I do. And was there an emotional connection to that when you did? I do. Yeah. Yeah. So... I moved uh, out of Colorado when I was 24, and still, I still think probably today my mom would, my mom referred to my radio career as like this little hobby thing I was doing, because she just didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people didn't. They were like, oh, like, 
And this is, it doesn't help. Well, I mean, it does. Like, people will be like, oh, the wiki wiki DJ? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not in a club at night. Like, I, I'm pursuing this. I paid, it took me 14 years to pay off my college debt. So they just didn't take it serious. So mm -hmm. I remember at 24, I moved up here and I said, I'm going to give myself until I'm 30 to make it. And it wasn't a dollar amount. Mm -hmm. It was knowing that I was on the right path and that people valued my work. And mm -hmm. I had the most amazing mentor boss at the time. And I think within a year, I hit it because he showed me, like, he was so amazing. We'd gotten hired at the different radio stations. So I came for one radio station, then we went across the street and worked for another. That changed my confidence of being recruited instead mm -hmm. of constantly sending out resumes. Yeah. Someone came to me and said, I want you. Well, that changed my mindset. And I think really at that point, I was like, I've made it. So if I get fired today, I know that all my efforts, I was sending out tapes. Like I had to record tapes in my living room of my air checks and, oh gosh, it was comical. But anyways, so yes, I remember when I made six figures and it was, I wanted to like save my tax return, you know, or my W-2 and frame it and that sort of thing. Like people frame their first dollar bill because I was told that women in radio would never make any money. Mm -hmm. And so when I finally crossed that sh threshold of making six figures, I was like, I, I did. I did against everyone telling me I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Super and then powerful. I went and paid off my student loans. <laughs> That's I took awesome. the difference because I was obviously single and, you know, I hate when people say, oh, you didn't have any responsibilities. Yes, I did. I owned a home. I paid for my car. I had responsibilities, but I took the difference mm -hmm. and it, I finally paid off my student loans. So it took me 14 years. That's a powerful statement yeah. too. But yeah. it, oh, I remember that moment. I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I did this. Like mm -hmm. it took me and it was worth every penny. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. What am I not asking you that you would want to share? Our demographic, and you know this, but yeah. our demographic is women that are, aspi are aspiring to six figures and then those that would be our counterparts. So they're already there and they like to listen in. Kind of. <laughs> so um, how would you, is there something that you think maybe those that are aspiring would learn from that I didn't ask you? Um, well, I will say, so I was doing really well in radio and then I blew it up. I took a 57% pay cut. When you go work for the government, they don't pay you any amount right. of money unless you're an attorney and um, or an elected official. But I took a pay cut and knowing that it wasn't permanent. Mm -hmm. So I think like I always like to share with people, yeah, I, I was making really good money and then I had to readjust and I had to, you know, really live on a stricter budget than I had been used to for a long time. Um, but I knew that that was going to springboard me mm -hmm. to my next position. I just believed it. Like, mm -hmm. I just knew inside me. I didn't know how, always. I didn't know how it looked. Still, some days today, I don't know how it looks. But I remember with my second year in real estate, and I blew away what I was making in radio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you have to take a step back to catch your breath, you know, I took mine, I caught my breath so I could fall in love. My path's a little different than everyone's. But if you take a step back to have a baby, or if you take a step back in order to be with a startup, and you're not making the six figures right away, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think we are always thinking we have to go forward, 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 forward. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way to get there. But if you take a couple of steps back, you can springboard yourself so much further if you... Maybe you need to recharge. Maybe you need to regroup. Maybe you need to implement some systems. Mm -hmm. And I went to a conference last year that talked about that. And they were showing um, an agent who was like killing it every year, every year, every year. And then there was one year where she made, you know, like $300,000 less than she was. And they said this was the year that she hired an assistant. Mm -hmm. And this was the year that she had to take time away from her business to train her assistant to do it the right way mm -hmm. to run her business. But then the next year, she doubled yeah. what, you know, those things, I think we, we don't allow ourselves. Yeah. That. I think it's a really, it's very timely too, because I think that, you know, there were, there was so much struggle in COVID, but they, I think there were a lot of blessings that came out of COVID for people if they were willing to look at them. And I think for some, it really made them evaluate where their career was and mm -hmm. how much time it required and just their overall life. So I think that there's a lot of people that are still kind of in that 
position where they're trying to decide what is that next or is that next or how it does that look so and it's easy for me to say jump because I jumped <laughs> out of my career of radio and I didn't have a family to support and I didn't have kids so I understand when I speak to people and say follow your gut instinct but I like my biggest fear in life is getting to the end of it and regretting that I didn't jump. Amen. Like, yeah. I am more fearful of wondering what if. And it's gotten me out of airplanes. It's gotten me <laughs> out of career. Like, I just don't ever want to wonder. Mm -hmm. And so if there is a way, and I remember my husband really was great because I had my real estate license, had a brand new baby, and I was still trying to work in the county, and I couldn't do it all. And mm -hmm. I was losing my mind. And he was like, just let go like, I know, just pursue real estate. Just go. Yeah. Just jump. And it was awesome to have that support. So, you know, mm -hmm. share your dreams and visions with your husband or your yeah. partner. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really powerful. Yeah. People thought I was crazy, too, when I left pharma. So. I think it's a compliment. <laughs> People think I'm nuts. I'm like, thank you. I am doing something different then. Yeah. Like, yeah, everyone does. And, but you... There wasn't there a voice inside that was oh like, gosh. go. And you didn't make me know where. And you just <laughs> go. And you just got to listen. Yeah. So Sometimes you just have to make that jump even if it's really, really scary. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also because people like us, and maybe not with, not with malice or anything like that, but it's when we get uncomfortable, we grow. Mm -hmm. That's the only place that growth can occur. But the people around us don't like that because oh, they're yeah. a lot of people around us don't want to grow. Mm -hmm. They don't want to change. And if we change, then they might be forced to change. And ah, yeah. And so when they see you making this big leap, you know, from your career, they're saying, wait, is this going to rock my world? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a podcast in and of itself, <laughs> it totally that conversation. Is. It totally is. <laughs> yeah. Because they might not even realize they're doing it with right. intent, but they they don't want things to change. Like, well, I need you in this role because that's how I've always known you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was a big thing for me with radio when, you know, I was leaving and people were like, people just, I was going to fail. I can't, I'm nothing without radio. Um, I'm nothing without my co-host. I'm nothing without the station. And I just was like, okay. I'm going to go be nothing over here then, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. And and it's just, it was their fear. Oh, absolutely. Their fear yeah. of what was going to happen when I walked out that door. And sometimes, most of the time, it's the people that love you the most. Because oh. they're fearful for you. Yeah. And they just, yep. yeah. But the way that it comes out isn't always wonderful. Yeah, the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's over cocktails one time. <laughs> Thank you yes, so much for doing you. this. So where can our listeners find you? Um, so you can find my podcast anywhere. It's available, Spotify, Google, all iTunes, of all of them. It is distributed on all platforms, and it's Secrets with Kate McGuire. Um, I drop a new episode every other Wednesday. Um, and, yeah, it's all about the struggles of being single later in life and still being allowed to want the things that you want, even though society says you should be put out to pasture is how I phrase it. So, uh, yeah. And I just, I absolutely love it. It's so much fun and I just want to give people hope. So thank you for doing this. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Of time. course. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much.